of all the duties in gardening, weeding is the most time-consuming cultural practice, and there's no end to it until the first killing frost late in the growing season. Simply stated, a weed is any plant growing where it is not wanted and is in competition with your cultivated plants. They compete for the same space, sunlight, nutrients, and water that are meant for your vegetables, flowers, fruits, or whatever you happen to be growing. Most of the time, the weeds grow more vigorously and overwhelm the crops in a very short time. They may be native, such as lamb's quarter or red root pigweed, or introduced species like quackgrass or purslane. So how do we manage weeds? The first thing you need to consider is your watering practices. All seeds need water to begin the germination process. And instead of using an overhead watering system, you might consider using drip hoses at the base of the plant. This will target where your water is placed, thereby all the weeds that would have grown in between the rows and other places will not have sufficient moisture unless it rains in order to germinate. Another very effective way to control weeds is by a process called mulching, which is basically either an organic or an inorganic covering on the soil. Now, as we get rain, it always results in a flush of weed seed germination. An article in the Chicago Tribune stated that in the top six inches of the soil, it can contain up to four million seeds per thousand square feet. When you cover the soil with a mulch, light does not reach the soil surface, which will hinder germination. A mulch can also smother very small plants that have already germinated. The thickness should be about two inches if you're using an organic mulch like straw. Example of mulches include as I just mentioned, straw, landscape fabrics of various types, plastics, and shredded bark. Some people will use newspaper, grass clippings, and other things. Now, if you have a light-colored mulch like straw, that is advantageous to plants that like cooler soil temperatures because the light is reflected by the light-colored mulch. If you have plants that like dark mulches like melons and tomatoes and peppers, what we call the warm season crops, they benefit from darker mulch. Now a mulch such as straw is good for about one season, but one of the advantages of using straw is you can turn it in at the end of the season with your rototiller and it will add to the organic matter level in your soil. Uh, some of the other uh, traditional landscape fabrics uh, can last up to 10 years, so you can roll them up wash them off or just put them on a fence or something and let the rain wash them off and then you can reuse them year after year. Now another thing that you can do is the traditional cultivation using various types of hose and the purpose here is to catch the weeds when they're very small and by tilling up the soil or scraping the surface of the soil you're cutting off the top section of the weed and if it's small enough it will not be able to regenerate itself because you've eliminated its food uh, producing capacity and it will dry up. Now this does not work as well on larger plants because you might scrape the top off of say purslane and it will grow right back even though it's an annual weed. All right these are two holes for cultivation. This is more of a traditional hole here in my left hand and you'll notice that the the head is a little bent and the idea is that when you're using it that it's a little bit of an angle and it just scrapes off the weeds. This one has a number of different names. I call it an action hoe, but you'll notice that it has a little different type of blade. It's, it's shaped like a trapezoid, for those of you who are math fanatics. And this is sharp on both sides. And it kind of swivels here, like this. And one of the advantages of using this hoe is when you're pushing it forward, you're cutting weeds. You're undercutting them just like you would a regular hoe. And when you're pulling it back, you're also cutting weeds. So this is much more efficient, uh, twice as efficient as this one is. So uh, when people have used traditional hoes and then they've tried one of these action hoes, they are really happy with how fast they can go through and get their weeding done. It's also a little easier to get into some tight spaces too with this one. Another method is chemical control, but that's not the purpose of today's video. But I wanted to make a couple of comments about them. Did you know that 40% of the pesticides used worldwide are weed killers and more herbicides are used than any other pesticides such as insecticides, which are controlling insects, or fungicides, which is for diseases. 
Some organic products include Concern, which is a pelletized corn gluten meal. You can also buy corn gluten meal at a local elevator. Uh, it's just called corn gluten meal, 60% protein content. It's a feed supplement. It's a much finer material, but it, it's the same as the Concern. Also, there are burned on products such as 20% acetic acid. And um, there's some other products available too. And I'm going to have a video uh, on those a little bit later because I'm looking at two of them right now. And then there's uh, the traditional preen, which is trifluorlein, and it's what's called a pre-emergence herbicide, which prevents seeds from germinating. It may kill some seeds as they're beginning to germinate, but uh, for the most part, it's considered a pre-emergent material. And again, I'll discuss these in a later video. And um, <clears throat> one thing that you want to remember is that when you have weeds in your garden, you should not allow them to go to seed because those seeds can be around for absolute long periods of time, decades. There's been some research done at Michigan State University where some weed seeds have germinated up to 100 years after they were put in a time capsule. There are other things that will happen to seeds in the environment. For instance, some will rot, some will be consumed by insects and things of that sort. But believe me, with over 4 million seeds per 1,000 square feet in the top six inches of the soil, there'll be plenty of them to germinate later, so don't allow them to go to seed. So those are the comments I want to have for you today. And of course, you can always hand weed, but uh, that's a long, drawn out process. Uh, I don't consider that horticultural therapy. I'd rather be doing something else, especially if you have large gardens. So those are some tips that'll help you to control weeds, and I'll see you later. Yeah.